So as I've already mentioned, um, we finished this about five minutes ago, and both of the speakers have all. Hold her techies. Gone. Well, you do have hair on your head. Did that change anything? No. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. As I already mentioned, uh, we finished this about five minutes ago. I've been working since 7 a.m. So, I have not exactly the time to rehearse this presentation. And for that, I apologize. But instead, you get to see Toad. I think it's a fair trade off. Um, let's see. What do we get? Toad. Why Toad? What is um, well, for one, I've been interested in mechanical things, and in particular vehicles. Um, for two, uh, not sure if you noticed, climate change, sort of a big deal. Electric cars are becoming more and more popular. I figured it would be a, a relevant thing for me to know, um, know about. Uh, so I figured I would, I would do it, uh, learn uh, in the most practical way I could think, which was to build one. Um, also, there's a company in northern Vermont making electric airplanes, and I figured this would look good on my resume when I apply them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for three, uh, the third reason is the number three. Three wheels are funny. Um, they just are. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the simplicity of just three wheels, the potential to flip over, or the uh, mildly impractical practicality that they don't have. Um, another potential source of inspiration for Three Wheels was many hours I spent uh, driving this car, the Ibishu Pigeon, in a game called Beam and G Drive. Um, I was also fascinated by the, uh, the concept of the Tuk Tuk. Um, not that I have ever seen one in person. Um, Amory thinks it's all about Mr. Bean, and I didn't have time to add a Mr. Bean slide. So, pretend Mr. Bean's face has just appeared. Um, so anyway, what is Toad? Toad is a 1976 Cushman truckster, turf truckster, uh, what I can best describe as a hybrid between a golf cart, a tractor, and a tricycle. Um, Four-wheeled versions are still in production now. Um, I don't think they make any three-wheeled ones anymore. Uh, and Cushman, as a company, is now owned by uh, Textron, who also owns Cessna, um, and Cessna happens to make a pretty famous three-wheeled tricycle. Um, <laughs> it's also green, so I'm not saying anything, but basically this is an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, into the um, backstory of, of Toad, because quite honestly, all of the time I spent on an exhibition, we'll, we'll cover that too, but it was quite a bit more tedious. Um, acquiring Toad, however, and, and the origin story. Now that's a good story. Um, going, going way back to sophomore year, when we had a uh, two month long, uh, three, two or three month long winter break, um, Griffin and I would, would spend many hours um, playing video games on, on Discord calls late into the night. Um, we would eventually decide when it's too late to, to keep playing video games, we're too tired, we should go to sleep. So we close the games uh, that we were playing, and then we would end up on uh, calls for another hour or two or three, going on Wikipedia tensions and, and, and so forth. Um, there's a photo of Toad. Um, also, what is Toad? Uh, why is Toad? It's Toad because it says Toad on the front. I don't know why it says Toad on the front, but it does. Um, okay. Back to the story. Um, one, one of these sites, uh, I discovered that um, from Walmart.com, you can buy for just $500 a uh, Coleman camp bike of dubious quality, minimal safety, and questionable real world use. Um, <laughs> this is where the idea began. I, I figured I wanted to have a fun vehicle project week, on like ongoing project. Um, so I was like, what if I get one of these? What if I cut the frame in half and make it longer, and then put a really long axle on it and turn it into a trike? So that's that's where the idea of three wheels came from. Um, 
But I never really went any further with that because I was a sophomore and doing a big project was intimidating. Um, so now we get to my junior winter, um, where I returned more seriously towards planning this as my next few project weeks and or detention and exhibition. This version of the idea quickly got left behind. No, that is a stray sentence. Like I said, didn't have time to reverse this. Um, I briefly considered the idea of uh, going fully custom, uh, building building the frame, building the frame and everything, and then I remembered that I uh, don't know how to weld. Um, <laughs> so, so we settled on finding a chassis that already exists and adding an electric motor to it. Um, Matt Dahl and I spent many, uh, many advisories drawn through Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist looking for a three-wheeled vehicle that I could get for uh, the lowest amount of money possible. Um, Matt had actually fairly early on discovered the concept of a custom truckster, but we kept looking. Um, uh, one, of, one of the other noteworthy considerations um, was a three-wheeled Harley-Davidson golf cart. <laughs> They exist. I don't know why they exist. <laughs> but they exist, and they were really tempting, because it's a Harley Davidson golf cart. Um, unfortunately, the cheapest one I could find was $1,000, so we passed on that. Um, we ended up back at just said, oh, yeah, Truckster seems like the best thing. What can we find? Um, there was one in the town of Putney. Um, but it still was fully functional and in pretty good condition and $2,000. Um, we then found a 1975 turf truckster. It was only $500. Uh, it was uh, just outside of Burlington, Vermont, which is, you know, that's not too far away. Um, it had a hydraulic dump bed, which I don't need. But I don't need this to begin with, so <laughs> why not? Um, it did have some downsides, though. Um, Primarily, it came with uh, not just its own gasoline motor, but a full spare gasoline motor. Um, the problem, I don't know if you uh, noticed, this project week was about putting an electric motor in something. Um, so having two gasoline motors was not ideal. Um, so, um, but this was still 500 bucks. I could, I could find someone to, to sell the motors to. Um, but then, very, very sort of, I, I think like only a week a week or two before I was actually going to drive up to Burlington and buy that one, I found Toad. Um, <laughs> it was a uh, Facebook Marketplace listing, again, 1976. Um, so 75, I would have gotten the years backwards. Um, that would be quite funny. Um, so Toad, only $100, no gasoline motor which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, also, Westmoreland, New Hampshire, which is 20 minutes away. 20 minutes away. Um, um, so this is where the fun starts. Uh, okay. Uh, Emery had planned to buy a trailer, and uh, we could um, take the trailer over and pick this up, uh, towing it behind her Jeep. A Cherokee, not a Willie's Jeep. Um, uh, even went to the point of uh, hiring kids for charitable work day to put a tow hitch on the Jeep, um, which I found hilarious, especially because I was taking the SAT that day. So it was just a bunch of kids doing work for my project that I wasn't there to do. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we ended up um, having limited faith in the Jeep's uh, highway towing capability. Um, so we, we settled on, for some reason, the idea of, let's put it in the bed of a maintenance truck, not knowing if it would fit. Um, so, unsure how we'd get it into the back of the truck, even less sure of if it would actually even fit. We chose to figure out, figure out the way, uh, because besides, it's only 20 minutes away, um, we'll have time in the morning, and we'll still be able to get back before our lunch, uh, lunch starts. Okay, you. So, 9 a.m. <laughs> we meet at the woodshop. We have two ramps. Um, there are three wheels. They are not in line. Two ramps is not enough. 
Um, we uh, spend about two hours looking for some material that might work as the third round. Um, 11 a.m. <laughs> we decide uh, we should just call the U-Haul in Brattleboro and see if they have a trailer that will fit. Um, we should have done this to begin with, but regardless, we've reached this point. 11.17. <laughs> Sorry for the late notice. Uh, I am not able to make it to crew today. Uh, also, for reference, at 8.21, I told the guy we'd be there by 11. Um, so that's going well. 11.30. We are at uh, the U-Haul. We have uh, a choice in trailers. Um, we have the motorcycle trailer. It has a ramp, which is very useful. Um, or we have the enclosed box trailer. Doesn't have a ramp, but is bigger. And see, we don't know quite how big Toad is right now. Uh, so we decide, uh, well, it's only you know, it's only a few inches off the ground. We can we can make it work. We'll go with the safe choice. Um, but I'm texting the guy, uh, the seller, asking, can you get me some specific dimensions? Because you know, if we could like this trailer was cheaper and had a ramp, like that's obviously better. Um, so, 11.45, Anne-Marie is inside talking to the um, U-Haul person. Um, if anyone knows what you call a person who works at U-Haul, that would be great. Um, <laughs> so at the Anne-Marie, we've decided we're going to get the bigger trailer than everything. So Anne-Marie is inside um, going through all the stuff to rent the bigger trailer. Uh, as Emery is inside, I hear back from the guy giving me dimensions, which are within an inch of uh, fitting in the small trailer. So we decide, let's go with the small trailer. Um, it'll be a fun adventure, and the ramp will be better. Um, so at 11.55, we have a trailer on the truck. Uh, again, I told him I'd be there by 11. <laughs> um, we were then uh, realizing, uh, how were we going to secure a toad? into the trailer. Ratchet straps were the obvious answer. Um, the pondering was more so, do we go back to Emory's apartment and get the ones that Emory already owns, or go to the Walmart in Hinsdale, New Hampshire? Um, we figured it would be funnier if we went to the Walmart. And that's <laughs> not entirely an exaggeration. Um, I'm pretty sure we did just go to the Walmart because it would be funnier. <laughs> um, point proven. <laughs> so we went to Walmart, got ratchet straps, uh, including some ex extra ratchet straps that you can see there that are green. We did not need them, but I was like, hey, these ratchet straps are green. Putney's color is green. We should buy some green ratchet straps. Um, turns out it was a worthwhile purchase. Okay, where was I? Um, uh, we also, um, well, we didn't. Anne-Marie was concerned that uh, Toad might be in, in very deep in a field and so bought uh, lots of bug spray and tick spray. <laughs> what is the next slide? 12.53. All right, sorry for the list. We should be there in 20 or 30 minutes. The GPS said we were 20 or 30 minutes away, so that seemed like a reasonable thing to say. Um, so anyways, um, over 20 minutes passes, and we're making our way up the uh, very winding back roads connecting um, the small towns of New Hampshire. Um, and the, so th this guy lives up a hill, and the driveway comes off at an angle. Um, and so the original direction came up the hill. Did not work for backing the trailer in. Um, so we had to go all the way down, um, past his house, find the nearest intersection, turn the trailer around, uh, and to go back. So we make it there. Um, it is now 1.59, <laughs> and Toad is on the trailer. Uh, this is approximately five minutes after I learned how to use ratchet straps for the first time. Mm -hmm. And this right now is about 20 minutes after I learned to use ratchet straps for the second time. <laughs> so there's Toad. Um, oh yeah, it's also the, um, the farm truck, uh, maintenance truck. Um, we knew going into this that the gas gauge didn't work, so we were just hoping that someone had filled it up the night before. <laughs> what we didn't know was that over the course of this journey, every other gauge would at some point display very wrong information. <laughs> um, as you can see in this video, the tachometer didn't work. 
Um, the speedometer was working for this clip. Um, <laughs> didn't work at all for the rest of it. Um, the temp gauge was what, you know, ev everything was off. Um, so, on the way back home, we had uh, my phone open with Google Maps, uh, because I'm a reasonable person. Um, Aurelia's phone open with Apple Maps, for some godforsaken reason. <laughs> and Anne Marie's phone open with Waze to see how fast we were going. <laughs> Because I don't know if you remember what happened over spring break, 
But Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. So these were some good episodes of Marketplace. Anyways, uh, I also got the uh, brakes and the hubs off for the second time. Uh, much easier this time. The first time we did it, one of the brake hubs went shooting across the room and almost killed Matt and all. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then uh, we get to my rivalry. So inside here, under this front body piece, uh, is the uh, primary brake cylinder, which uh, the old one was toast, not usable at all. Um, the problem is this whole box of steering goodness um, was in the way. So that needed to come off. And I had no idea how. I removed all of the bolts. It didn't come off. Um, turns out that bolt also needed to be removed. Um, the parts diagram didn't suggest that that bolt went all the way through, but it did. Um, so I made some progress. Um, the slideshow will not be run on this. Week three, measuring and ordering. Uh, let's see. So, week three uh, was, uh, I had started in week two, but week three was really when I was going through the parts diagrams, cataloging every part that I needed to order. Um, when I bought Toad, the uh, owner had the original parts um, manual, um, so I made PDF scans of it. So you can see this is, this is one of the more legible pages that I had to go through. Um, so I spent, spent most of the week in the library sort of picking through, um, cataloging all of these part numbers in a spreadsheet, finding where I could buy them. Parts are surprisingly easy to buy for these. Most of them. Some of them are impossible, but most of them are easy. Um, and then also made uh, measurements of the engine bay and all the critical dimensions so that I could start designing the motor mount. Week four, success. Um, started the week with lots of degreasing, um, particularly in this area. Uh, this, uh, not in here, uh, was the bane of my existence for about a week and a half. Um, I didn't know it was there, and I couldn't find a way to turn it, um, and it was very much in the way. But finally got that off in week three, week four, uh, with lots of help from Henry. Uh, continued pulling, I continued pulling the little wiring out. I also started uh, dissecting an old clutch disc, because my plan for connecting the motor to the transmission was to get an old clutch disc and weld that to a proper motor coupler, um, and that worked pretty well. Um, but we'll get to that later. Week five was more cleaning, uh, lots of um, degreasing wire brushing all the brake parts. So these are the hubs. Uh, for some reason, the um, left and right rear wheels have different hubs, and I don't know why, and I don't like it. Um, but whatever, it works. Um, week six, explicit warning. A double entendre. A double, double entendre. Um, Week six, I started flaring brake lines, learning how to flare brake lines. I was explicitly being instructed by Glenn. Um, here we can see what not to do. Uh, and here we can see you put the brake line in a clamp thing, you put the clamp thing in a clamp thing, um, also known as a vice. And then you have a screw thing with a wedge that pushes out the brake line, and then you push it back in, and it's a double flare, and that's the proper way to do it. Um, I also got the actual brake shoes in. Um, as you can see here, that one is more in than that one. We'll get back to that. And now for the explicit warning. <laughs> I broke Glenn's clamp. Um, <laughs> not a fun day, not a motivating day. Um, a day filled with lots of swearing, in fact. Um, but Glenn didn't seem that bothered. Um, week seven, lines. Um, finished bending the brake lines and, and uh, flaring and bending the brake lines. Started trying to figure out this mess, which actually isn't that bad now. I've drawn it three or four times on paper and about a dozen times on lens chalkboard tables, which helped a lot. Uh, let's see. And then part three, uh, I didn't have time to get a photo of the motor mount design. Um, you can look at it in person if you want to. Um, here is where I thank Lewis for the first time. 
uh, <laughs> of many. Um, Lewis did probably too much work on this exhibition. Um, I don't know how he got his homework done, but he had time to help me, and it was very, very helpful. We ate, break work, and panic. These videos never finish uploading. Thank you, Google Drive. Um, We get was just break work. It was just bleeding the brakes. It was sorting out the brakes. It was trying to get the brakes to work. Uh, week nine, panic. Um, this is the point where um, I started uh, actually facing my fears of the motor wiring. Um, I had been sort of procrastinating it for nine weeks. Um, <laughs> But here is, here is the chalkboard drawing, so we have, this is the motor controller, uh, this does fancy things. Uh, we have um, some wires that go out to the motor and then back down to the motor, and then a wire that goes out to, uh, I have two 12 volt batteries in series, um, 24 volts. Ideally this would be 36 or 48 volts, would give it a bit more power, but that's not the biggest issue right now. Uh, a fuse to make sure things are safe, maybe. Um, this is the main contactor, it contacts the batteries. This is the key switch, this is the original key switch, um, which was still fit for purpose. Uh, this is the throttle pedal. The wiring on this was annoying. It has a different color code than the wiring diagram for this. Um, so that was not helpful at all. Uh, but anyway, I, I figured out all the wiring eventually. Uh, and then here is, uh, here is the finished motor mount. The not quite finished motor mount in place. We still had to drill bolt holes for it. I say we because again, Lewis was helping me on this. Um, let's see. Uh, the next thing I did in week nine was this presentation. <laughs> I was very proud of this joke, but also this was a joke from two a.m. last night. Uh, and this is where we get to the real panic. Um, I had, uh, as of Friday, last Friday, um, Toad looked like it did at the start when I bought it, which wasn't really motivating. I, I had done work, I had done real work, so like it wasn't an issue. But it would have been nice if it looked like I had, like, if it was physical evidence of my progress. Um, so I didn't really have time to write this presentation until, like, Sunday night. Um, the slideshow was made last night. Um, yeah, so so I was a little bit panicked. So I was talking to Emery, right? and, and Emery was like, what if I bring a headlamp and we stay in the farm shop late? Um, so last night, we were in the farm shop till about 11.17 p.m. Uh, for which I'm very grateful we got the brakes finished. Uh, that's that's where we come back to the brakes weren't aligned or even um, real pain to get the brakes on, um, the brake drums on. Uh, and then uh, we weren't quite finished. We still have the like the final bit of wiring to do. Um, so we decided, you know what? Let's meet in Reynolds at 7 a.m. Uh, which I think was worthwhile because it sort of runs now. Um, but anyway, I've been working on this all day. Um, did not have time to reverse this at this end. So, here we are now. Toad, here are the final numbers. Top speed estimated to be 19 miles an hour. Woo! Woo! Don't clap, the jump cords can do 22. Um, <laughs> where Toad really shines though, is that it still has the full transmission for a gasoline motor, um, which, means that it can go very, very slowly. Um, the top speed in the lowest gear is theoretically 3.7 miles an hour. The maximum torque in the lowest gear is 476 pound-feet, theoretically. Uh, for reference, uh, so that's torque at the wheel. I'm going to give you torque at the engine. Those are not at all comparable numbers, but I'm going to say it because it makes me feel good. Um, that is more torque than an F-150 engine. Yes! Um, at top speed, it was like 91 pound feet of torque. I don't know how that compares to anything. Uh, so, anyway, uh, what I wrote as the purpose for the first project week was 
I hope to learn how to control electric motors, design electric drivetrains, and learn some basic fabrication skills. Have I accomplished that? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I understand the motor. Um, Lewis did most of the fabrication. Uh, but this was a project. This was the exhibition. And uh, so what I wrote for the exhibition was uh, the main to-do list is as follows and in no particular order. Replace the entire brake system, including rebuilding the rear drums. I did that. It took seven and a half weeks. Uh, cleaning rust off the frame, turn off the differential and the power takeoff. That's the other. This is a power takeoff. You can like mow along with it or something. Um, yeah. Um, I accomplished that, I think. Uh, disassembling and refurbishing the differential and PTO. Did not get to that. Reinstalling the transmission, ensuring shift linkages are working smoothly. Oh, I so nearly did this, and then I started driving, and then the shifting didn't work. Um, I got the, the front cowling off, cleaned the front suspension, designed the electric motor system, sort of designed it. I also followed the wiring diagram, but I wouldn't have been able to do it without that, and I, I think I did learn quite a bit about that. Um, I was also very optimistic in saying I would paint the frame. As you can see, that didn't happen. So, anyways, here we are. Here is Toad. Here are some thank yous. To Anne-Marie for being endlessly enthusiastic about Toad, endlessly encouraging about the progress I've made, and endlessly busy, yet still making time to puzzle over my problems. Also for loaning me $100 when I forgot to bring cash when I went to buy <laughs> Glenn? Glenn for answering all my questions, uh, providing tools for me to borrow and break, yeah. I did replace it. Uh, and teaching uh, me mechanical skills over the past four years of Project Weeks. To Lewis, um, for doing all the fabrication work. Um, seriously, let me know whatever I can do. <laughs> you, you will accept repayment. <laughs> um, Discord calls in the middle of the night as we all went insane over three month COVID winter break. To Matt Dahl for helping me figure out what this project was really going to be and sending me any and all promising Craigslist or Facebook marketplace listings that looked fit for this project. To Aurelia for missing her lunch work job a year ago to go pick up Toad last spring. <laughs> to Robbie McMichael for getting me started in mechanical project weeks way back in freshman fall and for letting me work with him almost every project week after that. To Max for being my emotional support throughout this project, and also holding the wiring in place while I drove it here. Um, not something I was expecting to be helped with. Um, to my parents um, for providing financial support and um, only being mildly disappointed that I've been very occupied with my time over the past few years. Um, uh, and we'll throw my tigers out there for making an entertaining news show. Um, thank you all. Do you have time for questions?